I've seen many discussions where people try to define what the word God means. And I believe those discussions will never be decided, but not for the reason you might think. The idea is, well, let me give an example. If we say that something weighs a certain amount, so many kilograms, or is so tall, that's objective. We're making an objective claim which can be verified. But suppose a child were to say to us, my daddy is the best daddy in the world. That's a subjective claim. The child is telling us how he feels, not making an objective claim. Now the child might think that the claim is objective, but we know it isn't. We know it's subjective. It would be a very dull adult who said to the child, now wait a minute, are you saying your father's better than mine? Or how do you decide who's a good father? What are your criteria? Time spent together, uh, whatever, other criteria. The point is the child isn't making an objective claim. And I believe that when someone calls someone or something God, it's the same thing. Not that they're being infantile like a child, but they're making a subjective claim. Just to present this again out of the context of a child, let's suppose a man describes a woman. Now he can describe the woman subject, uh, objectively. He can say the woman is so tall, has this color eyes, has this color hair. But suppose he says the woman is a doll or real beauty. That's a subjective claim. He means to him. And in fact, if, if a person grows up in a certain uh, culture, a certain ethnic group, they might find people of other ethnic groups not attractive. Someone who grows up in France may not find any Japanese woman attractive and vice versa. Someone who grows up in Japan might see French women and it might leave them cold. So who a man considers a doll is subjective. Now my point is the word God is exactly like that. And just like we can't define objectively if a woman is a doll or not, we can't define God. You see, in this theology, I began with the very first episode, the later groundwork, by talking about existence. And eventually I reached the conclusion that God is the ultimate ground of existence. Uh, we've also seen God described as uncreated light, which is how we experience, or one way to experience the ultimate ground of existence. Now, the only question for me is, does the ultimate ground of existence have objective reality? Uh, science has uh, in the past theorized the existence of the limited ether. There was a term they used for heat, began with a P, I forget how to pronounce it. Both of those entities turned out not to exist. And I mentioned also, I believe in the first clip, that the ultimate ground of existence may not exist in the sense that that's what we get when we reach bottom. We go down through the table, through the wood, through the molecules, the atoms, the quarks, and we reach an ultimate ground of existence. Well, we could have done this 2000 years ago for the earth and said, well, I stand on the earth, the earth, the earth must stand on something, but we know it doesn't. So if someone were to ask me to, or wanted to discuss whether the ultimate ground of existence has objective existence or is just an idea, that would be interesting. But when I say it's God, that's my choice. And other people, someone could say, I admit it exists objectively, but it's not God. And they'd be right, because it's a, God is a subjective term. So if someone reads the Torah and they read about the character Yahweh and they decide that's God, that's their choice. Uh, someone reads the New Testament and they decide Yahweh and Jesus our God, that is their choice. We have Krishna, we have Zeus, we have, and as far as I'm concerned, if someone says that is God, that claim is true in the same way that someone saying, my daddy's the best daddy in the world is true for them. 
or someone or a man saying, this woman is a real doll. That's true for the man. But the statements do not have objective value. Now for me, the ultimate ground of existence is that in which we live and move and have our being and we're created in its, in its image. But those are two phrases from the Bible that describe God. That doesn't prove that it's God, and it can't, because as they say, I have reverence. I believe that is the supreme, the ultimate, and that's the qualities we attribute to God. Just to reiterate, someone could agree with me completely that it exists, possibly could agree with me that way, but say it's not God. And for them, they'd be right. So that's why I believe people can't agree with uh, on what God is because it's a subjective term and it's like trying to argue whether a certain woman is a real doll or not. Uh, it, it's, it's a useless argument. Well, anyway, that's what I think. Thank you. This is an afterthought. When I said that debating what God is is useless because God is a subjective term, I meant it's useless in a philosophical sense, but it's had very real consequences historically. Uh, typically, um, let's say when Christianity or Islam spread, and other religions probably, Christian, Christianity begins to spread among the Germanic tribes, let's say, and which God is real becomes a, a, a power issue becomes which culture will dominate and so in that sense it can have very real consequences who god is but i'm talking about on a philosophical level um, the uh, power plays and politics of the world are a different subject just an afterthought